Now we need to say, was anything returned? And we can determine that by using if q num rows, that'll be available to us. And if something's returned, it would be equal to one, or we can say if it's greater than zero, then we know something was returned. Otherwise, nope, nothing was returned or there was an error. So at this point, we're going to return q and you'll often use result, and that's if you're selecting maybe a lot from a database, a lot of rows. But in this case, we're only returning exactly one row. So we can specify just return that single row, and that will now be an object containing the values from each of these fields. And if you want to check that out, why don't we do this? Echo pre, print r, q, row, and echo a closing pre tag. And let's just check that out. First, let's go back to my admin model, and we need to make sure that we load model, that admin model that we created, and then we'll call this admin model verify user. And for now, we'll hard code those values in. So jeffwayyahoo.com, and the password I believe we gave it was my password. So let's see what is returned when we do this now. We'll enter our credentials, my password. Okay, good. So now we can see that there was a database error and we have select star from users where email equals the email and the password equals that limit one. And it says no database selected. So we need to set a default database. That's the problem. And we can do that from within the database class. So I'm going to load that right now. By the way, I'm loading this quickly, but if you need it, it's in the config folder within database.php. So let's set our credentials now. We have our host name. We need to put in the username. In this case, I'm on my local host, so both of them are root. And the database name was demo. All right, let's try that one more time. Refresh. And it looks like I have some weird font installed. I'll have to fix that. But you can see here what is returned is an object containing the values. Very cool. So now, with that in mind, let's go back to admin model. Get rid of that. And now we're going to return the information on that row. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So while we could do else return false, it's really not necessary because if something was returned from the database, we will return here. So if it even gets to this point, it's sort of implied that it's else. So we'll just save a few characters and not do that. All right, so that is it for our model. Let's save that and return to our admin controller. So now we have called this method. Let's go ahead and bring that down and we're going to verify the user but this time we want to make sure that we pass in actually what they type rather than hard coding it in so we'll do this input and this is a code igniter class that is auto loaded so you don't have to manually load it like this so we can this this input post email address and the next one we're going to do is this input post password so what is this input post it's the same thing with regular php as doing this Okay, it's just a class that makes it a little simpler, gives you a little more security. Now, notice how we're not filtering this at all, shouldn't we? Well, we can let CodeIgniter do that for us. If I go to application, config, and I scroll down. Oh, by the way, we should set a base URL while we're here. So we'll paste that in, like so. And now make sure when you deploy that, that you update that. This would be if you want to remove your index file, you can do that easily with an HT access file. And when you do that, you'd get rid of this. But what we want here is, I'm going to search for XXS. And we can see here it determines whether the filter is always active when post or cookie data is encountered. And let's set that to true. And next, we're going to protect against cross-site request forgery. You can learn about that more on NetTouch or by Googling it. And we're going to set that to true. And you can see if you are accepting user data, it is strongly recommended that this be enabled. So we've done that. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about doing all of that filtering manually. So we're calling in our model the verify user. We're passing in the email address and we're passing in our password. Next, this is represented here and here. And we run a query and we say, get from the database where the email address is what they typed in, where the password is what they typed in, encrypted, and try to get something back. And if you did, that means, yes, they have an account. Go ahead and return that data. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Let's return back to our controller. So in order to capture the result from that model, we need to make sure that we store it 
and a variable. And while we're here, why don't we clean this up just a little bit, like so, just a little easier to read. So now we can say, if nothing was found in the database, remember we returned false. So we can say, if res, as long it does, as it does not equal false, then person has an account. And if that's the case, we're going to create a new session variable, and we'll call this username. It's actually their email address, but you know how you sign up for an account and your username is your email address. That's the thinking. Input post email address. So if they do have something in the database, we're gonna set a session variable called username and make it equal to their email address. Now remember, before we can use this super global, we need to run session start, right? And a good place to do that will be in the constructor function. We could do public, but it's implied that it's a magic method, so you don't really need to either way. So we'll run session start. Now, this isn't going to work. Um, we can test this out if we want. And you'll see, and good, this is what I'm referring to, call to a member function library on a non-object on line 11. So right here, what? Why, why can't we access this? What's wrong with this? And it's because we have this constructor method. If I remove that, it seems to work again. So what happened? Remember, we are extending the CI controller so that we get access to all of those methods. So when you create your own constructor function, that overrides the CI controller's constructor method. So we need to make sure that we bring in anything that's contained within that class. And you can do that by referencing the parent a parent is a way to reference what you're extending. And then we're going to call its constructor method. Okay, so we're going to call that method. And then when that's done, we're going to run our own stuff. And that way we don't override anything. Refresh. There we go. So we've entered our username. We've entered our password. We've logged in. It's been determined that an account is in the database. So we create a session variable and we make it equal to what they type in. Now, they're done logging in, so let's redirect them to that uh, members-only welcome controller. But what if they don't enter everything correctly? What if there is no account and they're trying to log in illegally? Okay, well, in that case, this will return false, in which case we're not going to do anything because it'll just keep going to the bottom, and this will run. We'll, we'll just reload the login view. So let's try this out now. So admin, I'm going to create a gibberish credentials. Let lets me know. Let's get rid of the password. Okay, so we have all of our validation. Let's enter something that is not an account, login. And you see it just sent us right back. So the last thing I wanna do here is, note if we enter this incorrectly and we click login, notice it all defaults back. And I'm sorry this is auto-populating, but that'll just be blank when it reloads on your computer. And it gets rid of everything I typed in, and that's just a major pain. So it would be nice if we can make CodeIgniter remember what we typed in. And we can definitely do that. So we'll return to our view. And right here, this second parameter is the value. So if we were to do high, if you wanted to test this out, see there. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use something available to us from the validation class, the form validation class. And we're going to say set value, and then we pass in the name, email address. OK, so if one exists, it'll just go ahead and populate the value field. So let's try this out this time. Jeffrey Way password. We don't want to auto populate that. So log in and notice it remembers that. OK, so we are all set. Let's go back to admin. If everything was done correctly and we logged in, we should be redirected to the welcome screen. And our password was my password. It's going to encrypt that and compare it to what's in the, the database. And sure enough, kick ass members only page. Next thing, though, is what about when they log out? So we need to come back here and we have our index method. Why don't we next create another function? And this will be called log out. And all this should do is destroy the session. So we can say session destroy, or you can also use unset with session to get rid of the username. And technically, that's probably the smarter choice, but it's fine for our demo here. And then we've removed the session parameter here. Next, that's this load view. When you log out, it's customary to bring you back to the login view page. So say login view. OK, so now the next problem is, regardless of whether we're logged in or not, I can always access this welcome controller. And by the way, if we leave it like this, notice that by default, it's on that welcome controller. So why don't we go back to config 
and the routes file. If we come down here, we can set the default controller. And right now it's automatically set to welcome. Why don't we set the default controller to the admin? That way it automatically brings us to the admin form. But again, if we wanna to go to welcome, it's always available to us. So as long as they know that URL, it doesn't matter if they're logged in or not because they can access it. So from within that controller, we need to perform a test to see if that session variable is set. So we can do that right down here and we'll create a new constructor method. And this time we're gonna be working with session. So let's make sure we start that. And remember, we need to make sure that we call the parents constructor method. And now we'll say if not is set session username. So when you load this page, if there is not a session property called username, then we know that they have not logged in, in which case they shouldn't be here. So we will redirect them to back to the admin controller, which will load the login page. All right, let's try that now. Refresh, index, try to go to welcome, and that's accessed, but that's only because we're logged in. Let's log out and now try to access it. See? We're trying to load that welcome controller and we can even specify the index method and we're not logged in so it won't allow us to access that page. So now let's log in and now it's running this test and says, no, wait, no, there is a session property named username. So this never runs and it goes ahead and displays the contents here. So what if you have multiple controllers? It's kind of a shame to do this for every controller. So if you have one or two controllers, that's fine, you can probably hard code this in. But otherwise, what you would wanna do is create a new library. And that library, again, would extend the controller, and then you would paste this code in and auto load the library with your project. That way, this code always runs when a controller loads. So that's up to you how you wanna do that. Okay, so we've created our, our login functionality. The only things we haven't done is a registration page, which I'm sure you can do on your own. Look into using uh, active record. So you could do this DB insert into the user database with the contents of the form fields. And the only other two things I wanna do here is make up some prettier routes and let's get, a, get rid of this index.php file. So let's do the first one right now. We'll create an HT access file. And I have a little bit saved, I believe. Yeah. So this is just a rewrite rule that will direct everything. It gets rid of the index.html file. So now what we can do is get rid of that and it still loads just fine. So that part is done. And the next one is pretty URLs. So remember by default, it's going to direct us here, but that's another problem. We can go to the welcome because we're logged in. So we should never even really be able to access this login screen, right? So let's do that as well. Come back to admin.php. And we'll do that right here. So this is the method that displays, potentially displays the login form. So we'll do if, again, if is set session username, then they've already logged in and they don't need to be seeing this page. And in that case, let's redirect them to the default page. In this case, that's going to be the welcome controller. So now they're logged in. I've refreshed, no matter what, even when I try to go to the admin class, it just automatically directs me to the, the proper page. Notice how index.php is still showing up, and that's because we need to get rid of that section within the config file. So we can go to config slash config.php and come down and make sure we remove that. So let's try it again. There you go. So now I want it to be easy for them to log out maybe by doing something like log out, and that will automatically route to admin slash log out. Okay, so we can do that within the routes file. And we'll just come down right here and create another one, route. And this parameter is going to be what the user types in. So if they type in log out, then we want to, and by the way, that's going to be relative, then we want to send them to admin log out. All right, let's try that. So before log out doesn't work, after now it logs us out. So that it just creates pretty URLs. And so, yeah, that's gonna do it. So fairly quickly, we created a, a very a very simple login system, but I would imagine for, for most of your needs, this'll be just fine. If you're building a much more massive site like Amazon, of course, you would want something way more in depth. But for simple sites where you just need to be able to give your client the ability to log in, maybe access some configuration options or, 
or administrative duties, this is going to work just fine. So if you have any questions at all, let me know. If you have improvements, definitely let me know. And you can access all of this on GitHub, which I will link to. All right, guys, I will see you later. My name is Jeffrey Way. And if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor and subscribe or follow us. Uh, the bigger our numbers, the more money we can spend on bringing you guys more kick-ass tutorials. So I'll see you later. Bye.